Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. I can do all things, I think I've said it here, it's a very very arrogant statement, if that statement is not completed. Do you know how many things are there to be done on earth? How does a man stand and speaks to a church, Paul is speaking to the church in Philippi, and then he says, I can do all things. I understand God can do all things, but you stand as a man and say, I can do all things. But then he says, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. No wonder scripture says, by you I can run through a troop. It says, by my God, I can leap over a wall. That means there are things that alone should not be done by ordinary men. But when this enabling grace comes upon you, and I'm praying for someone already in the name of Jesus that the things you could not do needed for your destiny, needed for the revelation of Jesus, the requisite grace for the next level, may it come upon you. The requisite grace for the next level, may it come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 5. Powerful scripture. 3 and verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. It says, but our sufficiency, our ability to always rise to the occasion, never disappointing, that when you see ordinary men producing extraordinary results, Paul here is defending the supernatural in men. He's saying we are not sufficient in ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Of God, of God, our sufficiency is of God. There is something we outsource from God that is responsible for the extraordinary results. Are we together? There's an enablement, an empowerment outsourced from God. Your life will command the extraordinary. Your life will command the extraordinary. I say it again to a believer, your life will command the extraordinary. That men will look at you and say, as a man of God, you are an ordinary man. Why are these kinds of results being produced? And you will tell them, there is an enabling grace. It comes by the Spirit upon ordinary men. But when it does come upon that ordinary man, you cease to be ordinary. Cease to be ordinary. You cease to be ordinary. You cease to be ordinary. Now, please look up. The way God structured the kingdom, the way God structured the kingdom is such that for every result and every aspect of human living, every result you desire and every aspect of human living, listen please, the power of God or what you call the grace of God is the factor responsible for results but it is not generic in its operation this is something you need to learn the grace of god is not generic that means you can you can receive a grace but that grace you have does not speak to every area of your life are we together now it is the reason why it is called manifold you can receive the grace for favor for instance you will prosper financially, but you will be surprised that no sick body will be healed from you because the grace for favor will not automatically heal the sick, yet it is grace. An architect will not be given a surgical knife and allowed to go to the theater, even though that person is a degree holder or a master's holder or even a PhD holder, a professor in architecture will not automatically be granted access to a hospital. Are we together? Just because he's a professor, there is a department, there is a body of knowledge, and there is an area where his specialty works in. This is how grace is. So most believers do not know that grace is manifold. So they find themselves pressing along one dimension, and because the Bible says everyone who seeks finds, they will find grace in an area and excel in that area. But because other areas are bankrupt of grace, it says abound in this grace also. You find all kinds of lopsidedness 
in our Christian experience. For instance, you can receive the teaching grace, but the grace for performance is not there. And two of them were supposed to go hand in hand to make your witness powerful, but you received an aspect of it. So your teaching is sound, theologically excellent, articulate, true, doctrinally balanced, but at the end of it, because the grace for performance is not there, you keep shouting amen, and at the end there are no testimonies. Are we together? Now, someone can receive a grace for signs and wonders, and because he did not receive the teaching grace, his administration of God's power looks like charm or herbal medicine because there is no word base to give people an understanding. There is no frame. Are we together now? So you cannot deny the manifestation of power, but there is no growth, there is no understanding. Those who are receiving are still in doubt because the individual does not have the grace. I hope you know that it takes grace to find the scripture that explains what God is doing. If you think finding scripture is an issue of intellect, try it. Buy a Bible and find it. No. It is the Holy Spirit that connects truths to truths. That sometimes beyond your scope of learning, you can meditate all you can. But if that grace for revelation is not there, you will not know the kind of scripture to combine because faith is built. And anything that is built requires intelligence. Are we together? If faith is built in people, you need to know the right scriptures that create convictions at which meeting. So you can say something that is true, but faith is not built in the people. Because the grace that helps you to combine those truths to create power and persuasion and release faith in the people is not there. If you are learning, say amen. amen. So, there are several aspects of our lives. Leadership, ministry, the supernatural, family, parenting, every major aspect of human life let me tell you the truth once there is an opportunity to represent the christ there there will be need for a grace there is a grace a dimension of this empowerment from the spirit as a general rule nobody can produce god's result to his satisfaction in the strength of the flesh you will never be able to produce god's result i repeat to his satisfaction in the strength of the flesh. The challenge with many believers is because we do not know that the grace of God is manifold. Sometimes, because of the abundance of grace we enjoy in one area, it produces laxity and we cannot press for the other dimensions of grace that are missing in other areas. Are we together? And so you find lopsidedness in our Christian experience, excelling in one area, but being utterly defeated in another area. I have seen people who have the grace for teaching, for instance, even have the grace for leadership, but the grace called favor, speaking across their lives, and even finances is not there. There are those who don't have the grace for relationships. They are sincere people, but nobody wants to be their friend. Yet there are others who are not the best of people yet. If they enter a strange place, give them one day, they've made three friends. Not by lying. They don't even know what is responsible for that attraction. I'm telling you, it's a grace. If you carry that grace, man, even if two of your hands are empty, you will never return empty. That grace speaks. It causes people to behave to you in a certain way. Have you seen people like that? So you will see somebody well-dressed with your tie and suit. And you see another person looking like, you know, somebody who is not responsible. And two of them will go somewhere. And you'll find the CEO connecting with the other guy. So um, why are you looking shabby like this, sir? I was just not in the mood to dress well. Oh, I see. It looks like you are a Yoruba person. And the other person say, look at me. Oh dear. If you look at the physical alone, you will be cheated in life a thousand times. 
I hope you are learning. The manifold grace of God. Now, when you see certain results happening in people consistently, consistently, it is because through the principles I'm going to be showing you, they have by mercy access this grace in the various areas as needed by their destinies it is your assignment to stay with the spirit of god listen and it is your assignment under a teaching grace like this my assignment is to show you the various aspects of your life that will be needed for destiny actualization so that in prayer now through knowledge you can cry for grace so if you find out for instance that god is calling you into ministry there are certain graces that should be present in your life the spirit of prayer and supplication the grace for leadership and administration are we together? The grace for influence. These are the manifold graces that if not there, you will see the direct consequence of not having that grace. Maybe this is explaining why a faithful Christian is not seeing results in other areas. Because for us, we are looking at grace as a generic thing. I have it. I fell down that other day. I received the grace called favor. It means I can organize a crusade. Where are the sick people? All of you come. Apostle laid hands on me. What came on you that day? This is the reason why we speak every time. Because it's not the same thing resting on you. Are we learning now? Yes. It's not the same thing resting on you. Do you think Isaac had never laid hands on his sons? Do you think Isaac never touched them? The question is why didn't that blessing he was talking about, why didn't it flow? If it was just about contact. Now, Paul Peter calls himself a steward of the manifold grace. The manifold, the many-sided, the multi-dimensional. The saving grace is one, but the enabling grace is scattered into various aspects of your life. The aspects of your life that are needed for life and godliness. Each and every one of them is grace-dependent empowerment dependent and all of them function differently please look up the way the grace for healing works is that it works with the hearing of faith and that's it when the grace for healing is upon you it is activated every time there is the hearing of faith are we together now so once the word of god comes you perceive faith to be healed in the people you can release that grace but the grace say for prosperity and wealth does not work that way the grace for prosperity and wealth number one it works upon your mind i've taught you this it transforms your thinking then it enables you to be productive then it translates to divine direction you see that now so just because you understand the working dynamics of the healing grace does not mean you can prosper because their working dynamics are different. And then if you obtain, say for instance, the grace for influence, the grace for influence cannot work until you understand leadership and relationships. If you don't understand leadership and relationships, you can shout amen to the grace for influence. You can have it, but you will never be able to lead anybody. The grace for wisdom and revelation is enhanced by meditation if you receive the grace for wisdom and revelation and you don't sit down with the word to meditate that grace cannot be released are you seeing how they all work now so just because you shouted amen and you received the grace it's important to know what you received and to know how to activate it the manifold grace of God. So there are many believers who have not received these graces or they have received it but they are not taught the dynamics, how the graces work. Today I can release upon you the grace for influence because I have taught you the dynamics. You know that influence is a combination of honor, 
relational principles, value, that grace can rest upon you and it is safe because there is an understanding that can activate it. When you carry that grace to an organization, in three months, you can become a leader there. Do you know why? Because you have what it takes to release the grace. The knowledge component to release that grace is there. If I go to a crusade ground, I don't need to be smart to heal. I don't need to be smart. All I need to carry is the genuine healing anointing, the grace for signs and wonders. And once there is an opportunity for faith to rise, either through worship or through the teaching of the word, once there is the hearing of faith, the power of God will be released there. And you will find people who are healed and tell you, I was doubting even as at the time. You see that now? But when you want to transform people, it needs intelligence on your own part. You who carries the spirit of wisdom, are we together? You must also pray for the grace and the gift of utterance. Utterance. The teaching ministry depends on utterance. If you don't have utterance, you can know the truth, but you may not know how to communicate it in a way that profits your hearers. If you're following me, say amen. amen. I have watched sometimes with pain in my heart as many people who do not understand the spiritual dynamics, they remain limited in ministry, limited in their faith adventure, limited in ministry, limited in their faith adventure. Why then do we go for knowledge? Since it is grace that is really responsible for all the work, why don't we just receive grace? Why do we keep learning and going under the labor of transformation? Are we together now? If that grace component is really the secret, then apostle, why subject us through teachings and teachings? Why don't you just hold an impartation service? If you are tired, there are ministers here. Lay hands on them to lay hands on everybody and say, go and manifest. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. This is the major thing I want to teach you now. Because for many people, we are impartation conscious. That's why we keep falling and rising, shouting and rising, rolling and rising. And yet the results that follow that impartation is not at work in us. It's not like the impartation is a lie. But we have not learned the dynamics of activating this many-sided grace of God. Pray right now and say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. Shalika paruska brande bela kusafraskiata. Open my eyes to see. It's a new season. It's time to produce genuine results in ministry. It's time to produce genuine results in my Christian adventure. Someone go ahead and pray. Time to rise to a higher level of witness. In Jesus' name we pray. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.